distinguished uh, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, Sin Chao. My thanks very much indeed to the Ministry of Industry and Trade and to ARIA for the honour and opportunity of being able to present today. Uh, as introduced, my name is Will Mackrath and I'm Nestle's uh, Supply Chain Director here in Vietnam. Nestle was started 150 years ago by a Swiss-German chemist called Henri Nestle. He invented an infant cereal that provided nutrition to young children whose mothers were unable to breastfeed. Today, Nestle is the largest food and beverage business in the world with a truly multinational presence and workforce. And we like to think of ourselves as local wherever we work. Ever since Henri Nestle's first success, the company has tried to follow the principles of creating shared value for society and for the business in a sustainable way, transparently. And in agreement with uh, many of the previous speakers, we also have to be fully compliant with local and international standards. Our efforts in this area are focused on three main pillars of creating shared value in nutrition, complementing our, our baby food business, water, complementing our water's business, and through rural development, which is really the focus of the discussion today, across all our businesses. To successfully do achieve this, Nestle sets out certain minimum standards which it expects its suppliers to adhere to. Two points of clarity here. Firstly, Nestle doesn't just work with the final link in the upstream supply chain, the supplier of the product it delivers to our factories. For key materials, we work with every link in the upstream up, uh, supply chain back to the original source of production, and obviously in many cases that means the farmer. Secondly, the standards that Nestle's supplier code requires are not always in place today. So we work with our suppliers, and often with farmers directly, on a journey to reach these standards within an agreed timescale. Globally, Nestle sources over 26 million tonnes of agri-raw materials. In these agri-supply chains, and for critical materials, Nestle will set up programs to work with farmers and other supply chain participants. Uh, I'm personally involved in the Nescafe plan here in Vietnam, which is obviously focused on, on coffee. We have a team of agriculturalists based upcountry in the coffee growing regions, supporting the rejuvenation of coffee production. This includes working with local institutes to produce high yielding plantlets, of which we have delivered uh, 11 million to farmers to date in Vietnam, training farmer leaders on good farmer practices, fertilizer, pesticide application, water management, and we follow a train the trainer model. The farmer leaders then in turn train their local communities. We support in setting up microcredit schemes, microfinance schemes. Uh, we give advice on intercropping and achieving certification standards. And then post-harvest, we work on storage and the logistics of moving this coffee to the factory or to the ports for export. Nestle has many examples of these collaborative activities globally. And this is not an altruistic endeavor. Nestle must also benefit in some way. And to complement many of the earlier speakers, this value can take many forms. For example, improved quality reduced food safety risks, improved costs, and security of supply and transparency of supply. Nestle has worked very successfully with the Vietnamese Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in the public-private partnership and the Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture in Vietnam on coffee production. I believe such models genuinely create shared value for all the participants in the value chain, as well as consumers and society at large. And this approach, or similar concepts, could be applied in the Mekong. Sin Kamong. 